Hello and uh, welcome to Upstack America's Oracle EBS Financial Functional Training. My name is Bob and I'm the lead senior consultant for Upstack America. And uh, with me today I have Victor who is also a senior consultant. And today we are handling lesson 17 of accounts payables and Victor, please walk us through. Thank you Bob for the introduction and welcome everybody to this lesson um, in our Financial Functional Training Series. Um, in this lesson, we are going to look at the concepts uh, listed here. We are going to look at how to delete an invoice and also um, how to cancel an invoice because there's a difference between the two terms. And um, we are also going to look at how to void a payment. So we have already understood um, the process, what happens from when we uh, have received an invoice from a supplier, somebody who has uh, sold to us uh, any goods or services. So they send us an invoice, which is a paper document, or maybe it can be electronic, uh, depending on the vendor or what they use. So they send you an invoice, and then, from the invoice, you capture the details uh, on the invoice and enter them in your invoice workbench uh, window in Oracle Payables. After you've entered the invoice, you validate the invoice to make sure there are no uh, errors on the invoice. If there are any errors, then the invoice will be placed on hold until you correct that uh, error and then revalidate it okay so once you validate the invoice then scheduled payments are created then you can go ahead and start the payment process whereby you select and once you can select a single invoice for payment or you can select uh, uh, multiple invoices uh, either manually through the payments window or you can do a pay run so we still haven't looked at how to uh, do a pay run or enter multiple invoices, uh, but we know how to pay an, um, to pay a single invoice. So in between that process of, um, you have the invoice you have received and captured the details and um, going to do payments, a couple of things could happen. You may want to delete um, an invoice maybe um, you realize during invoice entry that you are not supposed to actually enter that invoice so you can delete the invoice or you can have to uh, cancel that invoice and we'll see what when you do which uh, action uh, i mean what uh, what determines which action you will use, whether you're going to delete the invoice or whether you're going to cancel the invoice. So here's the basic of it. Um, you delete an invoice that has been entered in the system but has not yet been validated, okay? So uh, by now we know that you can enter the invoice and save the work that you have entered and uh, not validate that particular invoice that you have entered. So before you validate the invoice, you can go ahead and delete that invoice. Maybe you captured something on the invoice uh, wrongly, or maybe that was just a, a, a bad invoice that was not supposed to be captured. So you can go ahead and delete that invoice from the system, and it will be that like you had never uh, entered it before. So that's deleting an invoice. Um, what about cancellation? So cancellation applies um, in the occasion that you have validated the invoice. Once you validate the invoice, it means you have entered the invoice, uh, you run validation, it means there are no errors and therefore scheduled payments have been created. Okay, so 
once that happens, the invoice cannot just be deleted as if it had never been entered before. All right, the option that you have, um, the option that you have from that point, once you validate the invoice, is to cancel that uh, particular invoice. All right. So now that we are talking about this, uh, we also have to talk about um, creating accounting. Why am I talking about creating accounting? So it says here that once you cancel an invoice, then that once you, you have validated the invoice, you cannot cancel it. You cannot delete it, so you have to cancel it. So it cannot be that like that invoice had never been entered once you have validated it, right? So this necessarily means that an audit trail will be left. What does that mean? It means that when you have come to the point where by the option that you have is to um, validate, is to cancel this invoice, then an audit trail will be left showing that this invoice had been entered before and uh, this is the amount uh, that was supposed to be paid but uh, because of particular reasons then uh, we cancelled this invoice. So where does create accounting come into this picture? Um, at the end of uh, every period, then you usually run create accounting for the entries that you've done in AP, all right? And this accounting information is what is sent to the general ledger, right? And that is what we run reports from. So we said accounting information basically captures uh, business events that happen uh, within the period. So when you say that once you cancel an invoice, an audit trail is usually left, what that means is that when it comes to creating accounting for the events that took place in AP, then accounting will be created for this event of cancellation. However, accounting is not created for invoices that you you delete, all right? So that's the difference um, between deletion and cancellation. You cancel validated invoices, so this leaves an audit trail which shows that this is an invoice that had been entered and validated, but it was cancelled because of um, this particular reason. When it comes to create accounting, that cancellation will, will be recorded as uh, one of the events, accounting events, okay? So what kind of accounting is created uh, in terms of invoices? So we are going to see a demonstration of this in the system once we uh, go and do the practical part of it. Um, but once you enter an invoice and you validate it, then what you're acknowledging is that indeed this is a valid invoice, uh, the services were provided as shown in the invoice and I am liable for this amount to the payee, all right? So you're increasing your expenses and also increasing your liabilities, right? So you debit your expenses and you credit your liability. However, when you cancel the invoice, then you are reducing your liability and also reducing your expenses. Because when you cancel it, it says that at the moment I am not due for this amount because I have cancelled these invoices for whatever reasons. Maybe there's an issue with uh, the vendor, with the amounts or something like that. Maybe the wrong invoice was sent. So when you cancel, it means you're reducing your expenses and your liability. So you credit your expenses and you debit 
your liabilities. So once you create accounting, this information is going to be seen. Uh, those accounting entries are going to be created. All right, so I just wanted to introduce uh, what is it in particular, what kind of accounting we are going to be looking out for, all right? So now we have an idea of uh, the difference between uh, deleting invoices and uh, canceling them, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to go uh, to Oracle. We are going to enter an invoice. We are going to see how to delete it. And then we are going to see how to cancel an invoice which is already validated. The accounting that is created, all right? So let's head on over to Oracle. Okay, so I'm going to go and log in as Mascani Developers Payables Manager, and we're going to go to Invoice Batches. So let me first look up uh, what we have entered under Mascani for the invoices. So we have three batches. So we're going to create um, a new batch for purposes of this uh, tutorial. So let's create Mascani uh, test batch four, All right? Let's go to invoices. Uh, trading partner, we want Django. That pre-fills itself. Invoice date, let's use the current date. Um, invoice number, I know you are using MJ something, so I'm going to use MJ1005. Invoice amount, let's use uh, $50. This is the header part. Um, uh, let's go to payment terms. Uh, let's see what we have under Mascani. Right, we can use maybe Mascani Net 30 or Mascani Immediate. Payment method, we want to use check. Try and save this. Okay, so that's good. All right, or not. So payment method, and we don't need to enter anything else up to that point, right? So we have entered the header part. We can go ahead and enter the line. Uh, you can say that invoice has one line for $50. Uh, distribution account. Uh, we can use expenses account. Uh, that division. Okay.
so that's it for this invoice and we can save our work right we can save our work like that so those are the lines you can go and look at the distributions that's the distribution we entered the distribution account at the line level so only one distribution was created now if this invoice is like this let's go to this general tab it says uh, never uh, validated okay if this invoice is like this we can go ahead and delete this invoice and it will be like um, this invoice was never uh, entered to start with okay so what we are going to do let's enter another invoice in this batch so we'll have two um, invoices to work with uh, let's use the same date make this mjz1006 uh, let's do an invoice amount of 60 let's scroll over can get a bit annoying the way it keeps jumping back to the first field let's use the same terms we want to use check Fill this out again and save. See whether that held. Okay. So let's enter the lines and let's put this under one line to. And let's use the same distribution account. Okay, so that's all we have to enter here at the moment, and we can save. All right, so in this batch, we have two invoices, both of which have never uh, been validated. So if at this point the user the end user maybe the accountant who is going to be using the um this uh who's going to be entering invoices keying in invoices realizes that maybe uh, this was a wrong invoice they're not supposed to enter it okay the second invoice invoice number 1006 so you can come and delete this invoice and it asks you delete one record okay and that invoice is gone you can see when the batch total changes from 110 it was 110 here goes back to 50 because uh, that invoice invoice are not yet uh, been validated all right so um, that works up to this point all right However, now you may want to validate this particular 
invoice because uh, so that uh, you can go ahead and uh, pay it. All right. So we go to actions and then validate. All right so already here um, it says uh, validated so you can save let's close and uh, re-enter again Requery again so we can have the the refreshed page okay So let's see. All right. So this is our validated uh, invoice. So you cannot just you cannot just delete um, uh, this invoice as if it never uh, existed. Once you get to this point, you have to go and cancel uh, this invoice. Okay. So first, what I want us to do is to go and um create accounting for this particular invoice and see what kind of accounting is created once you enter an invoice and validate it all right so in order to um, create accounting what you do is you go to actions then create accounting right so we can create accounting in draft i mean if you just want to look at and see what kind of accounting is going to be or you can create final accounting and you can create final accounting and also post it so we're going to do this in draft all right uh, because we just want to see what's happening so when you create accounting click ok Online accounting could not be created for for this transaction. Please, uh, with the report parameter set to detail. Okay. So let me see the request. See what happened. So nothing went through. Try again. Get accounting. Online. Okay, looks like we're having an issue. Let's figure this out first and then we'll resume. Okay, so. Uh, So what we did is I have run the um, standard request instead of running it from the invoice window to create accounting. Um, the, the program is called create accounting. Uh, once you enter that, these are the parameters. It will ask you for the ledger, right? Because when accounting, uh, events are going to be uh, sent to the general ledger, right? So you'll enter your ledger here. Ours is Mascani here, for instance. Uh, you can pick the process category where you can say whether you want to create accounting for payments, uh, manual or invoices. So we want to just limit it to invoices for now, all right? 
can select an end date, do this in draft mode instead of final mode. We're going to look at creating accounting um, in depth. All right, you can, um, you can request for a detailed report and um, you can enter the name of the batch for that will be shown in GL, all right? So once you do that, you can enter OK and submit your request. Once we did that, um, uh, hold on, let me cancel this, cancel. So once we did that, uh, this is what we got completed, but with a warning. Uh, the warning was because of conversion rates for our um, our reporting currency ledger, uh, which is a sub ledger, right? So we don't have conversion rates entered for this period. That's why we were getting a warning, and you can see. Conversion rate does not exist to convert USD to Kenya shillings for the conversion type Mascani corporate and conversion date 20. So there are other invoices that we had already entered for which accounting was also created. And all of them are getting the same error. But anyway, so this is the accounting um, that was created for that particular uh, invoice, right? So once we entered the invoice and validated it, uh, this was the distribution account we entered. So expense was debited, which means expense increased and liability was credited. We entered this liability account when you were doing our initial setups, the financial option setups, right? So it's picked up and liability was increased, which means it was credited. Right, so that's the accounting that is created once you have entered the invoice and validated it. Let's go to the back to the uh, invoices entry window. Let's query that batch. Which was batch four. So the accounting that was created was for this this particular invoice. Oh, and by the way, so this is already validated. So if you try to delete this, what happens? Validated invoices cannot be uh, deleted. Okay. All right. So if we want to we don't want to go ahead and pay this uh, invoice. Now the scheduled payments have already been uh, created based on the payment terms, all right? No payments of, however, um, have been made, no actual payments, just scheduled uh, payments. However, if we want to cancel this invoice, we can go ahead and do it, all right? How do we do it? We go to Actions, Cancel Invoices. Okay. So cancel one invoice, okay. All right. And you can see immediately the status changes to cancelled, all right? The line amounts also goes back to zero. The total goes back to zero. If you go to distributions, there was the first distribution amount, which when we entered this invoice, right and there was the first and this is what has been applied like a negative amount once we have cancelled it all right 
So that's what happens when you cancel an invoice. Now, by the way, remember that we had entered an invoice, two invoices under this batch, and then we deleted one. And we deleted that invoice before we had run the create accounting program, okay? This create accounting program that we ran was for all invoices. However, we, we only see one invoice with this date, right? So that invoice that we had entered and then deleted was not captured anywhere because we had not yet validated it, right? So once before you validate, when you enter the invoice and delete it, it's as if you never entered that invoice at all. Now, another event has occurred here for which we can create accounting, which means um, this invoice was canceled. What does that mean? There are no even scheduled payments, right? But before there were, and accounting had been created. So that means that for that to take place, to, for it to go back to the fact that no invoices had been, uh, it's like no invoices uh, had been entered. I mean, it has been canceled now. Our liability has gone back to zero. Some more accounting has to have been created to reverse, like to reverse these particular entries here, right? So let's go and see whether that's true. Um, we're going to um, run the create accounting program again let me let me see whether we'll be able to run it from here this time so create accounting if not we'll just run it as a standard request so let me cancel first close this um and requery So here it is, invoices. You will see you also have the create accounting option at the batch, at the batch uh, window also. So let's go to action, create accounting. You want to do this in draft mode, okay. All right. Um, so I'll check on that and see what the reason is. But so let's go and uh, run create accounting. Uh, from the request screen. Create accounting. Ledger. This Mascani. Process categories, also invoices. And date um, 31. Final or draft, we want to do draft. Uh, we want to see a report, detailed report. We can um, give this another name, test batch, let me use A and okay and submit no all right so we can wait for this to finish okay so it's completed with warning uh, because of those rates. Let's open the new report. And uh, these are the previous invoices we had entered. So we want for 31st.
let's see so is this the new one so item expense conversion type okay Voice. So it looks like it came out the same way as the other one. Okay, so uh, the invoice cancellation is appearing here as the first one, right? And you can see event type here, invoice cancelled. Um, and here it is, journal entry description, invoice cancelled. And so previously we had increased our expense. It was 50, but now you see it, it has been um, credited, which is the opposite. And we have debited our liability, which is the same. Uh, uh, I mean, it is opposite of what we had before which means it has been debited, liability has been reduced when we um, when we cancel the invoice. We can see the accounting for um, invoice validation right here. So this is what we entered and validated after we canceled, this is what we got, this part here, okay? So let's go back to our slides. You delete invoices that have not been validated. No audit trail is um, is left. Once you validate invoices, we have seen you cannot delete them. You can only cancel them, and that leaves an audit trail uh, through create accounting. So this is just a simple representation. When you enter the invoice, after you saved it, you can go ahead and delete, and it will be as if you never entered that invoice before. After you've entered the invoice, you can validate the invoice. Once you validate the invoice, however, you cannot delete it, so you can only cancel, OK? Um, that is what we have learned up to uh, now. So the next thing we are going to see about is voiding uh, a payment. So what is voiding a payment? When you void a payment, is it's like you're reversing a payment that has, has been made. So you go, we saw, already saw how to pay a single invoice, OK? Um, so you can go make the payment and then maybe you realize that you are not supposed to make that payment. So what do you do? The voiding option makes you, uh, gives you the uh, option to, it's like re you have reversed that payment, then the invoice becomes available again to be used for payment if you want to, if you want to, um, to go ahead and, and do that. Right, so this is what basically happens. You validate the invoice, then you pay the invoice. Once you pay the invoice, the only way to go back is first you void the payment. Once you void that payment, then you can go ahead and cancel that invoice because it had already been validated. Okay. So let's see how that works. Go to invoices, entry, invoice batches. Let's see what invoices we have under this batch instead of having to enter. So we have this $30 invoice that has not yet been 
uh, paid. Okay. So if we go ahead and pay uh, this invoice, um, the way to do it is go to actions. If you want to do it from this uh, window, then pay in full, right? To make the payment, okay? It will bring you to this page payments window. Some the details are pre-filled because you went from the invoice page and some of those details are there, okay? Payment date, we already saw this has to be system date or ahead. Bank account was Mascani Bank of North America. Payment method is check. Uh, payment document, uh, the name you want to be Mascani, uh, checks under this uh, payment process profile, okay? So payment document is the check stock that we created there. Uh, this is, we already did one payment uh, in our previous session, okay? Um, so that's the payment process profile that has been pre-filled there. It was available uh, from when we were picking the payment document. So we have a couple of things here. So we picked this and therefore, uh, the payment process profile was also pre-filled there. And there's nothing uh, we need to fill up to there for now. Okay. Okay, I got this message even the last time. So let's see, maybe something didn't save. Okay, payment method. Check. Try that again. All right. So that's it. Uh, payment was done. Here's even the uh, ID. You can go and look at the payment overview. So these are all the details. Okay. If we go to invoice overview, we can see some of the details uh, of the invoice here. Um, from the fact that it's validated and the payments have all been made, okay? So let's go back to the invoice workbench. Let me require this so that we are looking at um, current records. So we did this under Mascani test batch three. Let's go to invoices. You can see all the information, amount paid um, is 30. There are no holds. There are no uh, scheduled payments because uh, all this has already been um, paid. So when you come here to view payments, then you have this option to void the payment. Okay. I don't know why it won't let me pick. Okay. 
Okay, so we have seen how to go to the void option uh, through the invoice workbench, but um, I wasn't able to select that option. So we can go through the payments. So payments window, just go to payments, entry, payments. Um, let's look at the payments that have been made. Let's use uh, the operating unit as a criteria. We don't have payments that are many payments that have been made. So let's find. So these are the two payments that are, we have made. One we did in a previous session for 50 or $100. And we have this one that we just did. So from this page, you can go to actions here and you will see the void option. Now under the void option, uh, you will have this two, the date and the GL date. Um, GL date, is for the accounting when you want the accounting entries uh, to be created. Okay, so it could be the same period um, that you entered the invoice, or it could be a different period if that period is already closed. Okay. Under the invoice action, you can put the invoice on hold or you can cancel the invoice. But if you leave the invoice action as none, then that invoice just goes back to be something like a validated invoice that has not been paid. So we still have a scheduled payment under it. So voiding a payment cannot be undone. Choose OK to the void the payment or choose cancel, right? So once you void a payment, then uh, there is no going back. I mean, the invoice will still be there. And so if that invoice is still the one to be paid, then you can make the payment again, okay? So there you see, once you void the payment, um, a negative payment amount is indicated. If you go to uh, the invoice, you'll also see that amount changes to unpaid, status is validated, right? You can even go to the invoice workbench and see from there. There's no amount paid. The status is validated, what it was before we did the, um, uh, the payment. We also still have uh, the scheduled payments here listed, okay? So that is what happens, and that is how you void um, a payment that has already been done, which is basically you're showing, uh, you are, saying that you have made a mistake in issuing that payment, all right? And so uh, you want to, re to reverse that option, okay? So that uh, invoice that we have made payment for and then we avoided, we can go ahead and cancel it if we don't want it to uh, to remain in the system as a validated uh, invoice. Anyway, so in this session, we've learned how to um, delete invoices, to cancel invoices, and also to void payments. Um, Bob, unless you have something to add, that's a good place to end this session. Thank you. Thank you.